questions 11 through 20 on the 2015 grade 8 AMC 8. In the small country of Mathland, all automobile license plates have four symbols. The first must be a vowel, second and third must be two different letters among the 21 non-vowels, and the fourth must be a digit. If the symbols are chosen at random subject to these conditions, what is the probability that the plate will read AMC 8? Probability is always some fraction. The denominator is the total, and the numerator is the specific condition. Our specific condition is AMC 8, and there's only one way of making that. Now we have to figure out what is the total. Total number of ways of making these plates. Well, for the first position, we can put one of five vowels. So there's five choices there. For the next one, we've got 21 letters to choose from. And for the next, we've got 20 because they have to be different. And for the last one, we've got 0 to 9, which is 10. And now we have to just multiply them. So 5 times 21 times 20 times 10 is 21000. Zero, 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 and that's what goes in the denominator here. And therefore, that's your probability. So number 11, the answer is B. How many pairs of parallel sides, such as A, B, and G, H, or E, H, and F, G, does a cube have? Well, how many sides does a cube have? First of all, it has 12, right? So we can group them into groups of parallel sides. So for example, in this one, we've got A, E, B, F, and then at the bottom, we have D, H, and C, G. Correct? So that's the first group of parallel sides. The next group of parallel sides are, of course, you can do the same thing. E, F, A, B, H, G, and D, C. And then the last group of parallel sides, E, H, A, D, F, G, and B, C. Now they're saying how many pairs? All right, well, you can make pairs. For example, you can have A, E plus B, F, that's a pair. A, E, and D, H, that's a pair. A, E, and C, G, that's a pair. And then I can make more pairs. For example, uh, D, H, and B, F, D, H, and C, G. And finally, the last pair, B, F, and C, G. So as you can see, I made six pairs here. And in a very similar way, you can make six here and six here. So in total, they'd be six, six plus six, 18. So the answer to this question is C. How many subsets of the two elements can be removed from this list so that the average of the nine remaining is six? Well, first of all, if we have a sum, we can help this question along. And when we add up all those guys, it's 66. Now, they want nine numbers to remain that have an average of six. So that means that those nine numbers would have a sum of 54. So basically, from the total sum of 66, we want to have numbers, nine numbers remaining that have a sum of 54. So we've got to get rid of numbers that total 12, which is the difference. And those numbers, there's two of them, because it says that you have to remove two elements. So two numbers that sum up to 12 is what we have to remove. Okay, 1 and 11, 2 and 10, 3 and 9, 4 and 8, 5 and 7, and I think that's it. So these are the five subsets that we can remove in order to meet the criteria of the question. So number 13, the answer is D. Which of the following integers cannot be written as a sum of four consecutive odd integers? Well, four consecutive odd integers, so 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3, 2n plus 5, 2n plus 7. 
that meets the criteria of four consecutive odd integers. Add them all up, and you get 8n plus 16. Factor out an 8, and we get n plus 2. So basically, four consecutive odd integers, when you add them up, they are going to be a multiple of 8. So which one of these is not a multiple of 8? Because they want the one that cannot be written like that. Okay, no problem. 16 is a multiple of 8, so is 40, so is 72, and so is 200. 100 is not. So number 14, the answer is D. At Euler Middle School, 198 students voted on two issues in a school referendum with the following results. 149 voted in favor of the first issue and 119 voted in favor of the second issue. If there were exactly 29 students who voted against both issues, how many students voted in favor of both issues? All right, make a list here. Students voted in favor of issue one, favor of issue two. Favor of one, but against issue two. Against issue one, in favor of issue two, and finally against both, one and two. Now let's see what kind of help they give us. Well, I'll, I'll label these. I'll call this guy A, I'll call this B, C, and D. I think that will help. Well, the first thing is that all of the students combined will be A plus B plus C plus D. And they tell me that is 198 in the question. And then they also tell me that 149 students voted in favor of the first issue. So that means A plus B is 149. 119 voted in favor of the second issue. So that means A plus C is 119. And then 29 voted against both issues, so according to my labeling, that means D is 29. Okay. So substitute D equals 29 to there, and that gives me A plus B plus C is 198 minus 29, which is 169. And then these two add them up, and when you do, you get 2A plus B plus C is equal to 269, 268 actually. Okay, now you just subtract them, and when you do, you just get left with 268 minus 169, and that's 99. And I think that's what they wanted us to figure out. How many students are in favor of both issues? And that's this guy right here. So, 99. So number 15, the answer is D. In a middle school mentoring program, the number of 6th graders are paired with a ninth grade student as a buddy. No ninth grader is assigned more than one 6th grade buddy. If one-third of all the ninth graders are paired with two-fifths of all the 6th graders, what fraction of the total number of 6th and ninth graders have a buddy? Well, the number of 6th graders, I'll call us S, and they're saying that two-fifths of them is pretty much the equivalent of one-third of the ninth graders, which I will represent as N, because they're saying that's how they are paired. So from this, we can get that S, if we cross-multiply, is 5N over 6. And then they're saying they want this kind of fraction. What percentage of the students are paired up? Well, for the 6th graders, it's 2s over 5. And then for the ninth graders, it's one-third of them. These are the people that are paired up. And we have to divide by the total number of students, which will obviously be s plus n. So this is the fraction. Well, this is equivalent to that. So instead of putting 2s over 5, I can just put 1 third n, and then into 1 third n. And then the s is 5n over 6. So there we go. Now I've got it all in terms of one variable. And since that one variable appears everywhere, I can just cancel out. So adding the fraction, this becomes 2 over 3 over, if you get a common denominator and add, it will be 11 over 6. So now invert and multiply, and you will get... 2 over 3 times 6 over 11, and that's, that is 12 over 33, 
and if you divide top and bottom by 3, you'll get 4 over 11. So number 16, the answer is B. Jeremy's father drives him to school in rush hour traffic in 20 minutes. One day there is no traffic, so his father can drive 18 miles per hour faster and gets him to school in 12 minutes. How far in miles is it to school? Again, we will use that formula, speed is equal to distance over time, or any variation of that formula, such as time is equal to distance over speed. So in rush hour, rush hour, the time is equal to distance over speed, so therefore the time is 20 minutes. I'll put that in hours since they're talking in miles per hour. So that's 20 over 60, which is a third, one third of an hour. And distance we don't know, and the speed we don't know. Now, when it's not rush hour, when there's no traffic, the time this time is 12 minutes, so 12 over 60 is 1 over 5. And the distance, again, I don't know, but they're saying the speed now is the speed plus 18. All right, I've got two variables, two equations. I can solve this. This one cross multiply, you get 3D is equal to S. This one cross multiply, and you get S plus 18 is equal to 5D. And we're solving for D. So let's substitute for S, 3D is plus 18 is equal to 5D. And therefore, 18 is equal to 2D. And therefore, D is equal to 9. So number 17. The answer is D. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is obtained by adding a constant to the previous term. For example, 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14 is an arithmetic sequence with five terms, in which the first term is 2 and the constant added is 3. Each row and each column in this 5 by 5 array is an arithmetic sequence with five terms. What is x? Well. This is a, this is a plus d, this is a plus 2d, this is a plus 3d, and this is a plus 4d. So that means that a is 1 and a plus 4d is 25 in that row. Okay, no problem. I can now solve for d. a is 1, 4d is equal to 25. So that means 4d is equal to 24, and therefore d is 6. Okay, so I can plug it this all in now. This will therefore be 7, this will be 13, and this will be 19. Okay, so I can do a similar kind of scenario here. There's many w approaches to this. I'll just do it that way. And again, same thing, A, A plus D. Now, these are different A's and D's. I'm just using A and D because that's sort of the standard notation. And then this one is A plus 3D, and this is A plus 4D. So same story. So that means a plus 4d here is 81. But a is 17, so substitute that in. And therefore, this looks like 4d will be 81 minus uh, 17, which is 64. And therefore, d will be 16. So I can now add this in. This is going to be what? 33, 49, um, 65, and then, of course, 81. All right, so one last one we have to do, and that's that column now. So in a very similar way, by now you're an expert, A plus 4D, but this time we're going down, right? This is A, this is A plus D, this guy right here. Um, I can actually probably write it inside and probably make a little bit more sense. So this guy is A, this is A plus D, this is A plus 2D, this is A plus 3D, and this guy is A plus 4D. So based on that, my A plus 4D in this case is 49. A is 13 up here, so I can just put that in there. So that means that 49 minus 13, which is 36, is 4D, and therefore D is equal to 9. So these numbers are going to be 13 plus 9, which is 22, and then 22 plus 9, which is 31. There you go. You just got X. 18. The answer is B.
A triangle with vertices A, B, and C is plotted on the 6x5 grid. What fraction of the grid is covered by the triangle? Well, the total area is obviously 5 by 6, so that total area is 13, 30. Now, to figure out the area of ACB, what I can do is I can figure out the area of that triangle and subtract from it these smaller triangles right there. So that's what I will do. So ABC will basically be, what's that, 3 by 4? So 3 by 4 minus 1 half base times height. So for this guy, that is uh, base, if you can use 3 and 1, so 3 and 1. And then another 1 half base times height here, which is, again, the same thing, 1 half 3 times 1. And then finally, this guy, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 times 2. So this is 12 minus 1.5, 1.5, minus 4. So that is 5. So the area of ABC over the total area is 5 over 30. And that reduces, of course, to 1 over 6. So number 19, the answer is A. Ralph went to the store and bought 12 pairs of socks for a total of $24. Some of the socks he bought cost a dollar, some cost $3 a pair, some cost $4 a pair. If he bought at least one pair of each type, how many pairs of $1 socks did he buy? So X, Y, and Z is what I'll call the $1 pairs, the $3 pairs, and the $4 pairs. And we know that x plus y plus z is 12, since there's 12 pairs of socks. And we also know the value, which would be 1 times x times 3 times y plus 4 times z is $24. So this is the system of equations we have to solve. Um, I can just isolate for z here. So z will be 12 minus x minus y. Substitute that into this guy. So that will give me 3 plus y plus 4 times z, which would be 48 minus 4x minus 4y is equal to 24. And let's see here, if you put everything, that will be 24 is equal to 3x plus y. Okay, so I obviously have to get integer solutions. So let's see, if y, y has to be a multiple of 3 because that's the only way I'm going to get an integer value for x. So if y is 3, x will be... 21 divided by 3, which is 7. And then let's see what z ends up being. z will be 2. Okay, that'll work. And they wanted me to find how many pairs of $1 socks, and that's represented by the x. So that's just 7. So number 20, the answer is D.